Today on the podcast, we're going to be talking about a deeper integration that OpenAI is planning on doing with ChatGPT in the education field. Now, this is really interesting. Recently, I was at the AI4 um, conference and I was listening to Sal Khan, who is the CEO of Khan Academy, and he was talking about um, essentially the experience that they had integrating this. He said OpenAI reached out before ChatGPT was ever launched about getting that integration made and working on it. So obviously, they saw a lot of... Um, they saw a lot of value in the industry. Um, he started working on it when they launched ChatGPT. He was like, hey, like, what the heck? Because I think he was actually working with GPT-4. They gave him the better version. And he's like, hey, what the heck? You guys are already, you know, launching ChatGPT. I thought we we're going to launch this together. And they're like, oh, no, don't worry. This is just, uh, you know, this, this is just like a, a beta version. It doesn't work that great. And of course, they did not expect it. But ChatGPT absolutely exploded and became incredibly popular. And um then when GPT-4 came out, he was able to launch his, I think it's called Conmigo, and they that launched around the same time as GPT-4, or maybe a little bit before, so he kind of got like some special treatment because of that. All of this is really interesting because um, it would appear that o Chat OpenAI has really seen um, the value in education for a very long time, but it looks like just recently they're about to make some big pivots. So today on the podcast, we're going to be diving into what these big pivots are and how we think that they potentially are going behind Khan Academy's back or others, right? And uh, going directly into this field. Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Make sure that you go to AIbox.ai, link in the show notes, to join the waitlist for our new AI platform. We're going to be launching an incredible platform that allows you to build anything you want with workflows um, in AI. So you're able to chain together chat GPT and image generators and audio generators to make really powerful apps for your organization, or you can host them on our marketplace and actually generate royalties from them. So make sure to go to AIbox.ai and join the waitlist for in addition, if you like the podcast, if you could do me a massive favor and please leave us a review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. This helps me be able to get better guests on here as they check the reviews to see how you guys are liking it. So if you could please do that, I would really, really appreciate it. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. So the big headline here is that OpenAI angles to essentially put ChatGPT in classrooms with special tutor prompts. Now, this is very interesting because essentially what they're trying to do is they, they believe that ChatGPT is a very viable tool for educational settings, even though the platform's potential for um, misuse can't, I think, be overlooked. But the AI company has rolled out several recommendations to help educators harness the capabilities of ChatGPT, which is kind of moving beyond its common use as a research assistant for students um, looking to cut corners. So the technology has come under scrutiny um, for enabling academic misconduct, particularly plagiarism, right? Now, a lot of people are worried like, oh, kid's got to write an essay. He just gets ChatGPT to write it. Then he's never going to learn how to write essays. This is the big concern that a lot of people have. Educators globally have found or suspected instances where students use ChatGPT for tasks ranging from essay writing to take-home quizzes, and the repercussions of this are, you know, kind of open to interpretation. Some view it as cheating, some as creative use of resources, but there's no denying that it really does disrupt the traditional education setting. I, for one, think it's kind of like a calculator, and at some point, um, everyone's going to have it, and so you might as well uh, kind of like a calculator, learn when it's appropriate to use and not use, um, but it, it should just be integrated into every sort of educational setting because this is something that when people have jobs and have a professional career, they're definitely going to be using. And now is probably the best time to figure that out. So that's my opinion, but I know everyone's got different uh, views on this. So in any case, seeking to kind of rehabilitate ChatGPT's image in education circles, OpenAI suggests a variety of ways the tool could be constructively employed in the classroom. So, for instance, the platform could serve as a valuable resource for English language learners, helping them with translation and correct language use. While the AI's accuracy in factual content may be debatable, it does produce grammatically correct outputs, making it useful for both young students and adults. 
experts cited by OpenAI proposed that ChatGPT could also be instrumental in creating new test questions or even simulating a job interview scenario. But perhaps I think one of the most interesting recommendations comes from Greta Venugopal in Chennai, India, and she advises that ChatGPT can be used to teach students about the fallibility of computer-generated information. So Venugopal encourages students to critically evaluate the answers they receive from ChatGPT and to corroborate them with primary resources, aiming to help students, quote, understand the importance of constantly working on their original critical thinking, problem solving, and creativity skills. So a prevalent question that I think often arises is kind of the issue of detecting AI-generated content in student submissions. So OpenAI is quite straightforward in stating that current AI detectors are not reliable in distinguishing between human-generated and AI-generated content. The company advises educators to be cautious when relying solely on technology solutions to identify plagiarism or other types of academic misconduct. And the thing that I think is really interesting to note with that is that shortly after ChatGPT came out, OpenAI actually came out with an AI detection tool to write. So this is the company that's creating the AI content, and now they've come up with a tool to detect it. And they found that it was only accurate like 60% of the time, which to be honest is hardly more than a, you know, a flip of a coin. And so at that point, they actually have discontinued since that tool and it's no longer uh, a tool. So I think the fact that OpenAI can't even detect if something is AI written or not uh, really gives a lot of uh, credence to the fact that we may need to find other solutions because eventually, I think, inevitably, this is going to be very, very difficult to detect this stuff. Um, kids could even take something generated by OpenAI, run it through a text spinner, um, so that you essentially can't uh, detect anything, any like secret uh, codes or algorithms that uh, an AI generator put in there. Um, a text spinner just takes the original text, swaps out a few words. I, I was doing this a long time ago to uh, avoid AI detection back when I thought that it mattered for Google and SEO and articles, but I think Google doesn't care about that anymore. So in any case, um, I think it's going to be very, very difficult if that is what people are kind of relying on to detect. I think it's going to pretty much come with a fundamental shift where we we may just have to accept um, AI generated content, but maybe want to look at the way that students develop that article and maybe make them show the prompts they used and how much they actually worked on it versus how much just the AI generated everything for them. So overall, I think uh, it's really going to come down to a big, um, a big shift in how we look at this and how we uh, really work with AI, but I think it's going to completely change a lot of things. So Instead of just trying to, you know, focus on using this kind of technology to catch AI generated content, OpenAI actually advocates for a more comprehensive approach. So students should be required to show their work and drafts, including their interactions with AI to demonstrate a genuine engagement with, with the learning process. That's OpenAI's idea, like I mentioned uh, before. And OpenAI even provides educators with various prompts designed to place ChatGPT in the role of a tutor or instructional coach. So ChatGPT or OpenAI is literally generating prompts, giving these to educators. They're telling them frameworks to use. They're telling them like the best ways to uh, use ChatGPT in education. Um, and I think like it's really interesting because ChatGPT and similar AI agents are really kind of poised to become integral components in the future of education. And while the risk of misuse remains definitely a concern for many, I think it's a challenge that is not unique to this technological era. Students and educators alike are going to need to adapt and learn how to integrate these tools effectively, much like the previous generation did with calculators and early digital resources. The last thing I want to bring up um, is something I mentioned at the beginning, which is the fact that, of course, you know, Khan Academy has invested quite heavily and has, you know, added some of their own secret sauce and built a really uh, great education tool and resource with their Khan Migo. Um, but it is interesting that it would appear, you know, uh, OpenAI is going and, you know, straight to educators, giving them specific prompts to use to help ChatGPT be a tutor, giving them specific frameworks and ideas on how to use this, um, which kind of, you know, I'm sure to Khan Academy could feel like a circumnavigation of these tools they've developed. But I think at the end of the day, I don't think this is a big issue. Khan Academy has spent a lot of time building a lot of really impressive resources that integrate with, you know, educational lessons that are that integrate with a lot of different platforms and tools and software. And I think at the end of the day, what people are going to get out of Khan Migo or Khan Academy is so much more powerful than just, you know, simply using ChatGPT and telling it to be your tutor that I think uh, there, there's a lot of value there. But it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. 
and to see, you know, where a lot of the money spent goes in education, if it goes straight to OpenAI or if it starts going to these third party softwares like Khan Academy or others. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. TIAA is on a mission. Why? Because 54% of Black Americans don't have enough savings to retire. So in collaboration with big name artists like Wyclef Jean, TIAA released Paper Right, new music inspiring a new financial future. With 100% of streaming sales going to a nonprofit that teaches students how to invest. Stream Paper Right now and help close the gap. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below. 